Thanks to everyone for participating in our first ever online car show. If you haven't already done so, go online and check out the great entries. But now, for what you've all been waiting for, let's go see who the winners are. The first generation Corvette category, presented by Vince Con Corvette and selected by Gibson Hufstetter. I'm Gib Hufstetter, and I'm trying to help select uh, the best vehicle out of the C1 group. Had a lot of fun studying all the cars, beautiful cars, great engine powertrain combinations, but I had one in particular by Linda and Jerry. They had a white 1960 Corvette that has over 290,000 miles and has been used by them for family transportation for many years. And uh, to me, that was quite a demonstration of engineering and good quality production. As an honorable mention selected by Gibb was Jeff Stabar and his 1961 tribute to his father, a 44-year engineer at GM Research. The second generation Corvette category presented by Titan Lift and selected by Peter Brock. Corvette Hall of Fame inductee Peter Brock has selected Darwin and Patricia Ludy's 1963 split window coupe. The couple are the fourth owners of the car and purchased it in 2000. It has won a number of awards from concourse events and was recently photographed by Richard Prince for Corvette Magazine. The third generation Corvette category presented by Volunteer Vet and selected by Jerry Palmer. After looking at it and reading about it, that's a car I would like to drive. And that's a car I'd like to own. But the thing that stood out among all the other Corvettes, there must have been 100,000 of them, was the photo. Whoever shot it was a pro. And the car looks like it's doing 180 miles an hour, like coming right at you. <laughs> and it, it just, it just looks fantastic. The wheels look great, the side exhaust, the color. The fourth generation Corvette category presented by Dana Forster and selected by Dave McClellan. This is Dave McClellan. Uh, I'm in my office with uh, Dar Dora, who's a Vizsla. And behind the camera is my wife, Joanna. And we're gonna talk about the rationale behind uh, how I judged the C4s in this virtual contest. Over the years, I've been asked many times, which was my favorite Corvette? My answer is one of returning the question. Do you have children? Which is your favorite? They get the point. That said, there were so many excellent C4s pictured in this virtual concourse that it was hard, hard, hard to choose. Now onto my picks. The winner, Robert Lombe's Habeck Breathed On ZR1. This is a great performance package still available today. Honorable mention, Terry Day's Lingenfelter ZR1. Unfortunately, this package is no longer available but it can be duplicated by Mark Habeck. And then a special recognition to all of the beautifully maintained and driven Corvettes in this judging. The fifth generation Corvette category presented by the NCM Fighter Squadron and selected by David Hill. David writes, I was pleasantly surprised at how many entries you had. And I read almost every C5 entry. What delightful stories to think these cars are in their early 20s and still vivacious and still inspiring passion from their owners, many of whom are also drivers, real drivers. Although very difficult due to many great entries, photos, stories, and cars, my selection is winner Hillary Whitting for her Sun Chaser C5. Odd, you may say, since the photo doesn't tell much about the car, but the story tells all. What wonderful writing. David also shared that he selected an honorable mention, stating, having such had a difficult time selecting one winner, I had to take advantage of your offer to name an honorable mention. And that goes to Randy O'Neill, a great story and a great car too. The sixth generation Corvette category, presented by Dan and Barb Drummond, of Huntington Sheet Metal was selected by Tom Wallace. Hi, Tom Wallace, retired Corvette chief engineer here and I'm going to announce the C6 winner of our competition. 
I have to tell you, there were so many great Corvettes, almost 200 entries, that it really was tough to pick a winner. But um, those of you who know me and my affinity for Jake, you understand why I picked the winner than I did. I've picked Travis Rosinski's Bad Jake, which is a 2009 GT1 Championship Edition, a black convertible, and it has Jake's all over it, on the hood, on the interior, under the hood. Um, it's just got Jake everywhere, and it's a beautiful car. Uh, Travis is, attends a lot of the Corvette Corral, so I'm sure uh, that some of you have seen this car, and I'm sure that I've seen it uh, in the past. Um, but because of all the Jakes and how beautiful it is, uh, that's the, that's the uh, car that I've picked to be the winner for the C6 category. Not only that, but let me top it off. They've recently had a son and they've named their son Jake. Now go ahead and top that, can you? Probably not. So anyway, uh, thanks for letting me participate. Thanks for all the entries. Uh, the Corvette family is alive and well and uh, everybody stay safe and have and healthy. Thank you. Tom also awarded two honorable mentions. The first honorable mention is for Larry Closter, 2008 convertible pace car. Not only did he own a 78 pace car, of which the 2008 pace car was designed after, but that they had driven their car everywhere, including 7,600 miles to Alaska on the Alaskan Highway. Tom's second honorable mention goes to Robert Rutowski with his yellow, Carroll 2010 Z06, sharing that he has tracked his car significantly and is equipped with Johnny O'Connell suspension kit. And Robert is 79 years old and still, still tracking. My hero. The seventh generation Corvette category, presented by Kim's Gold Dust, was selected by Tom Peters. Hi, this is Tom Peters. I think this contest is just a great idea. You know, these opportunities are both fun and challenging for me because every Corvette example is uniquely beautiful and expresses the owner's personality and passion. But I am honored to have the opportunity to view all these photos and the wonderful stories that go along with them. In this instance, two stories stood out for me. You know, it's people and their stories are what make Corvettes amazing. Faith Worrell's experience with her papa is beautifully written and illustrates how the Corvette transcends generations to connect loved ones and friends. These experiences strengthen bonds and make for memories that last a lifetime. Congratulations, Faith. For honorable mention, I chose Brian Bouchard's beautiful experience with his granddaughters on prom night. This is a perfect example where Corvettes played a special role in creating wonderful experiences and lifelong memories. Beautiful Corvettes and a great story. Congratulations, Brian. Thanks to Ralph White Merchandising, we added an eighth generation Corvette category, with the winner receiving a set of Corvette stools from Ralph White. The winner is Ralph Cladstead, who had been dreaming of a mid engine Corvette for 43 years. Ralph took delivery at the museum on March 16th, followed by an 1800 mile odyssey through seven states, four thunderstorms, close calls with hail in Oklahoma and tumbleweeds in New Mexico before making it home to Tucson, Arizona. The C1, C2 track Corvette category presented by Adams Polishes was selected by Lance Miller. Hi everybody, it's Lance Miller with Corvettes at Carlisle. I am here today as a celebrity judge for the National Corvette Museum online car show. I believe it's the first one ever, so I'm very honored to be a part of it. And uh, I've got to tell you what, it was very difficult to do this just due to the fact there were some amazing submissions out there. And first and foremost, want to thank everybody for submitting their vehicles, because um, without you, we wouldn't be able to do this. So thank you very much for supporting the National Corvette Museum. Without further ado, in the track C1, C2 category, I decided on one particular car that really would fit nicely in my garage, and I think anybody out there would love to own this particular car. It's a 1966. Roger Penske L88 Corvette. That was a prototype motor at the time. And I gotta tell you, this car sounds just as good as it looks. Valley Stream, New York is where the restoration was done by Corvette Repair Inc. And I give them a big thumbs up. They did a phenomenal job. Again, the car sounds great, looks great. And the owner, Kevin McKay, 
is a, a dear friend of mine. That sounds terrible, but I swear that's not the reason I chose this car. It's absolutely stunning. Sounds good. Has all the right ingredients to be a car that is a celebrity choice. Now on that note, it was very difficult because I had C1 and C2. And uh, fortunately for me, they said, you know what? You can pick an honorable mention. So I did so. Jan Hyde's 1962 Corvette is definitely gonna be that car. Um, again, I always say the cars are really what it's all about, but at the same time, it's truly the people behind them. Jan's a big advocate of the hobby, and uh, with his website, registryofcorvetteracecars.com, he does a great job at categorizing all the different vehicles that have raced out there, and a big thumbs up for that, thank you. And the car is amazing as well. I love the fact that it raced in the vintage series out there in the later years, so I think that's awesome. Again, just two amazing vehicles. But with that said, I gotta tell you, the other cars that were submitted were all right there, all top notch. So it was a very difficult choice, but again, wanna thank everybody for submitting their vehicles. And uh, boy, I had a great time. So thank you, National Corvette Museum. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video and I certainly enjoyed checking out all the cars. Thanks again. The C3 track Corvette category presented by Corvette Central was selected by Anthony DiLorenzo. Hi, this is Tony DiLorenzo, and I'm here to judge the uh, the C3 track Corvette entries. And uh, I just want everybody to know that I copy and give house setters gray beard. So we're a member of the Gray Beard Brothers. Anyway, I selected uh, the uh, Band-Aid Corvette, owned by, back then by Doug Bergen, and uh, it's been restored by uh, Kevin McKay. Um, it was driven by the Johnsons, Marietta, Marietta Bob, and, and Columbus Bob, and uh, also Jim Greendike. We raced against them in 1969 and 70, and uh, we all, all of us as CCA Central Division Corvette racers knew each other very well. Um, but anyway, their car was always well prepared, beautifully turned out, and, and well driven. Um, we also, uh, our team was the Owens Corning Fiberglass racing team, and uh, we had a streak to, that uh, lasted 22 races in 69 and 70, 22 straight wins, and 14 of those were 1-2 finishes. Anyway, um, we worked hard, but we didn't mind because we were kids at the time, but uh, it, was, it was a great effort, and uh, anyway, uh, we're, uh, we're all the better for it. Um, I would also like to mention Larry Van Gelder's four-speed Corvette Nightwind. Very impressed with that because he and his wife's enthusiasm for the cars, that is obviously a big part of their lives. At any rate, uh, that's my uh, contribution, and uh, I hope everybody is doing well and uh, we're advancing relentlessly. Thank you. The C4 track Corvette category presented by Mobile One was selected by John Heinrichsy. Ed and Linda Van Scoy raced a C4 for over 25 years, setting a dozen speed records at multiple venues. The C5 track Corvette category presented by NCM Insurance was selected by Andy Pilgrim. I want to say thanks to the NCM for asking me to be part of this online car show. Uh, in the C5 track category, we have four entries. Um, the first one that I want to talk about is Chris Kurtz's car. He calls it Heart Attack. Uh, I can see why. It's probably more go faster bits on this car than most of the race cars I've ever raced. Stop take brakes, I recognize in particular, and the um, forge line wheels and the fat shocks. Uh, those parts definitely been on some of the race cars. That thing has to be an absolute rocket ship. The second honorable mention here would be Hillary Whiting's car which is a, uh, she drag races this car. She told me she won a race uh, last October. Congrats to you, Hillary, for that. I think you call it the Yeti Vet. Uh, it's kind of cool. And um, hopefully we can get you at MSP uh, to do some uh, road course stuff, Hillary. That, that'd be kind of cool. Sean Halloran, another honorable mention in the Yellow Vet, very partial to the Yellow C5s for obvious reasons with the C5 all race cars. A lot of stuff there. And, and you're running it at VIR. We're running it last year at VIR, one of my favorite tracks in North America. But my top pick has to go to Tommy McKeon in his silver, gray, silver type of bronzy C5R tribute car. Uh, thanks for doing that, man. 
um, C5R, one of my very favorite race cars that I ever raced in my whole long career. So thanks to all of you uh, to, for being part of this. Again, uh, congrats to Tommy for winning, in my top pick anyway, and uh, the, honor the other guys for honorable mentions for the other three of you. And thanks for being part of the NCM online car show. Thanks guys. The C6 Track Corvette category presented by Ready Computing was selected by Johnny O'Connell. With his wife's blessing, Norman converted the car to become the family's C6R, with himself, his wife, and sons all driving seat time in it. The family is involved with the Texas Region SCCA, and the youngest son has driven the car to two SSM championships. The C7 Track Corvette category, presented by Michelin, was selected by Doug Feehan. Hi guys, my category was C7 Track Worthy. Well hell, every C7 is track worthy in my mind. But my pick, first overall, Russ Alford. He took a Monster Z06 and went to work. I don't think there's any part of this car he hasn't touched. It is one amazing piece of racing technology. Russ, great job. You have created an absolutely outstanding track car. But I have to say, we've got a runner up too. My man, Steve Blunk. Why Steve's car? A couple of reasons. Number one, he won the car in the NCM auction. Happened to be on my birthday. Number two, he sent it to my buddy Reeves Calloway who put his magic touch on it and created a tremendously effective street machine. So guys, Russ, Steve, great job. The most unique or personalized Corvette category is presented by Callaway Cars with Reeves Callaway selecting the winner. Hello folks, Reeves Callaway from California. Greetings. I have to tell you what a difficult job it was to judge this class. Uh, let me make a few comments first. What I saw was a, a terrific range of creativity, of execution, of design. I, uh, I have a lot of admiration for so many of the cars in this, in this list. So excuse me for picking just one, but that's the nature of the contest. I picked Rosemary Dimmix, 2013 Grand Sport Callaway a car that was done with uh, great planning, great execution, has been running for seven years now, uh, driven by Rosemary and runs like a freight train, looks beautiful, gets all kinds of comments. But you know what? You could say that about all of the cars in this contest. So congratulations to Rosemary, but I want everybody to go look in detail and, and look at things like Bob Alford's 57. Uh, look at Casey Peterson's Aerobody from 1990 and look at the hundreds of other entrants and isn't that remarkable that we would have more than 200 entrants in this class. I think it's just a good indicator of uh, the depth and capability and skill set in our wonderful pursuit, our wonderful hobby, uh, our wonderful passion. So really congratulations to everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join in. Uh, personally, I look forward to seeing you all soon, as soon as possible. Stay well, be well. The best story category is presented by Mid-America Motorworks with Mike Yeager selecting the winner. Hey, this is Mike Yeager. I'm hoping all uh, participants and families and family members are doing well in this uh, tragic time in America that, uh, you know, when, when uh, Katie talked to me about doing an online car show, I said, what a great thing to do. Yeah, count us in, we're involved. Um, hundreds and hundreds of people responded. What else are we gonna do but think about our cars, go to a car show, even if it's online? Uh, was we read through all the participants, the one that caught my eye, Brian Walsh, you need to hug your wife because I guess that's legal this day and age, but uh, you need to hug her because your story of uh, finding your 2010 Corvette Grand Sport convertible was pretty awesome. And, and what caught my attention was I was a young man in 1965. Well, I was a little boy back then. 
I was down in Cocoa Beach, and as the Cape was developing, uh, all I could see running up and down US-1 was Corvettes. All the guys and gals working at the Capes were making a lot of money, spending a lot of hours working, and sports cars were the rage. Uh, Jim Rathborn's Chevrolet built a new dealership that year, and they had a bunch of astronauts there, and they had Corvettes there, and man, it was like uh, heaven for me. So when I read your story, it tugged at my heartstrings, and like any time you judge a Corvette show and you're doing it on what catches your attention. It could be the car, it could be the owner. Well, in this case, it was the car and the owner's story. So congratulations, thanks for t participating. And I hope we do this again and do it some more. And I look forward to seeing everybody out at real live Corvette shows this summer. Mobile One has selected award winners for Best Street Corvette and Best Track Corvette. In the category of Best Street Corvette is Carlos Rodriguez with his C7 Grand Sport with Heritage Package. Judge Jeff Valentich of ExxonMobil shared the following feedback on his selection. Thank you for your 28 years of service for our country. I'm happy to hear your wife was already prepared to let you take Patriot home that day. And maybe your wife can have a discussion with mine. Runners up receive a jacket and hat. Include Keith Cross with a 1961 Honduras Maroon Corvette. Jeff shared that it is a great original car and color combination, and that it's always great to see the passion to maintain a classic, but not afraid to drive it. Daryl Loafman with his Black Shark Convertible also received runner-up nod. Jeff shared that the classic Shark Cruiser is in a great color combo, and Kelly's taking the car to NCM for a birthday celebration next year. Finally, a comic relief mention goes to Paul Hersing with his 1963 Corvette. Jeff said, sometimes in tough times, you've always need someone to make you smile and laugh a bit. For the Best Track Corvette Award from Mobile One, the award goes to Bruce Jarrett with his 1961. Mobile One says, thank you, Bruce, for your service to the Air Force and best wishes for continued success on the track. For the Plant Manager's Choice Awards, we were fortunate to recruit several past GM Corvette Assembly Plant Managers to each make a selection. Our sponsors of these awards include Artisans Apparel, Conti's Corvettes, and Laid Back. Hey, this is Jeff LaMarche, and I want to congratulate Brad Hansen. Uh, I selected Brad's Corvette in the show, uh, Red and White Cove 59, that they have had for 44 years. Just really love the story around how they picked that up. And then to couple it 60 years later with a red ZR1, I just thought was a great story. And it was really, really hard. I mean, there were so many great choices. I literally could have picked dozens of different Corvettes, but I really enjoyed the story. I love the red and white Cove 59, one of my absolute favorite Corvettes. So congratulations, Brad. Jeff also selected an honorable mention, and that goes to Marjorie C. Matthews. Jeff says the Matthews are a true Corvette family and that his family also owns a 1953 pedal car and have shared it with their own granddaughter. Uh, my winner, or my celebrity winner, is in the C7 category. Uh, it's the 2014 Corvette convertible Lime Rock Green, uh, the first car of Brian Bouchard. I want to congratulate Brian because I think, at the end of the day, this is such a great story. It has a way of touching the Corvette community on so many different levels. The idea of owning two Lime Rock uh, Green uh, Corvette convertible at the same time is cool enough. But, uh, but to use those to really change the lives, potentially change the lives of four young teenagers for their senior prom, introduces the love of our car to the next generation of potential owners. How cool would it be if the introduction results in a Corvette ownership someday for one or more of those young people? Congrats to Brian for seeing the future in such a gracious way. You know, now I love the lime rock green color with the Kalahari top and Kalahari interior when we launched the C7. You know, I had the great privilege to launch the C7, so chances are good that I was the plant manager when, when we built those cars. And just know, Brian, a little bit of our love and blood is in every one of those early cars. It was a flawless launch and one of the greatest rewards of my General Motors career. Enjoy the ride. Congratulations. Uh, my selection uh, was in the story uh, that I got from David uh, Lottermilch, uh, where he was talking about his uh, 96 Grand Sport and how he uh, came about 
uh, purchasing the car and what he learned from talking to various uh, engineers and, and racers associated with uh, his car. You know, he has uh, number 008 of Grand Sports. And um, just uh, reading his story brought back uh, memories for me uh, of the time that I experienced uh, when I was plant manager responsible for the production of the car. Uh, we uh, also uh, uh, had to do a lot of things in manufacturing that probably David uh, never heard of since he didn't talk to anyone. I don't think he talked to uh, some of the people that was actually involved in the manufacture of the car, which I do suggest that he does that. Perhaps maybe uh, at a future Corvette event, uh, he, if he sees me, uh, I'd be glad to talk to him about some of the behind the scenes things that went on. But I consider uh, the 96 Grand Sports as the best uh, C4 that we ever produced. The President CEO's Choice Award presented by Custom LED Service and selected by Dr. Sean Preston. I am proud to share that the President and CEO's Choice Award goes to Fred Kokoska for his 1961 Ermine White car. It's an amazing vehicle, an amazing story. Uh, Fred's father purchased a car new in 1960, and when Fred's father passed away, Fred and his son have now restored the vehicle. It's got original paint, blue interior, beautiful vehicle. Congratulations, Fred. For the People's Choice Award, we ask our management team to each select their favorite Corvette. From there, we posted all eight picks on both the museum's Facebook page and our website for voting. Todd Hodgkin's Radicalized C1. David Reeves' Bond Beige 1962. Kevin Long's 1975. Anthony Crispino Sr.'s 1977. Terry Day's 2011 ZR1. Carla Comer's Flutterby C7. Mike Hayes' 2017 Grand Sport Collector's Edition. Receiving the most combined votes is Peter Askus' 1967 Corvette. Congratulations to Peter. We had more than 235 Corvette clubs represented through entries in our online car show. We greatly appreciate those clubs who help promote this endeavor, as well as all the great promotions we give the museum throughout the year. We are thrilled to announce the winner of the Club Participation Award is Sunset Vets of Northwest Florida with 25% club participation. Thank you again to our judges, our sponsors, and you, our participants, for making this a wonderful online car show.